hovering over the individual items displays a summary. Clicking gives you detail information, photos, as well as reviews. And if you want to purchase something, it's as simple as clicking. It's now installed and ready to go. What's interesting about the way we've decided to solve discovery is the application actually comes with you rather than you having to go to it. So let's navigate to another web page. How many people have children? This is a great math games website. And let's do the same thing, Randy. Let's purchase the PBS version because we know we trust them. And that's it. If we're ready to now go, we can launch those applications we just purchased. And it's that easy. So that's the first part of this, is how easy can we make it? As simple as a click and making it easy to discover the applications that you want to purchase. It's all done in a personalized manner and it isolates based on where you are. Randy's going to launch into the PBS game. Thanks PBS for doing that as part of the demo. And let me talk a little bit about distribution because that's the second part of this. What we've done is we've created a developers cooperative. We want to bring the power back to the people not put it in the device manufacturers, but actually give it to the developers and the content creators. Thank you. Yes. In doing that, what we've set up is a referral program, as well as we're putting all of the rules, ter terms of service, up onto the website and allowing them to vote. This way they understand ahead of time what the rules are and they can actually influence them. The referral program will pay them 5% for any user that they recommend use the open space product. I'm Robert Rich. This is Randy Wattler, and we're Open Space. Wow. OpenSpaceStore.com. Okay. Any questions? Judges, do you guys understand it? No. No. I, I see. Some... Where Where do the apps come from? How are they How are they discovered on those pages? How are they discovered on the pages? And where do they... Who made those apps? Where'd they come from? How so the they? developers themselves upload the apps to the app store. And register them to content? Or you do you do content analysis on your times to match it to apps? Or you do Yes, that's exactly right. There's two things that are actually happening there. The first one is we understand where they are. The second one is there's a personalization engine. So you will get different recommendations than I will based on my behavior and my patterns. And what's interesting, the way we solve the problem is all of that is stored locally rather than being pushed back to the server. So you're not actually sharing information as part of that process. Okay, the judges are confused. They don't understand it. What question? So it's, I mean, at the high level, it's an app store. We're focused on HTML5 apps. In the way of discovery, we've moved it away. Instead of going to an app store, the app store actually comes to you. And then it, discover, it discovers things that are relevant and interesting based on what you're currently doing. And then you just click and install. So talk about customer acquisition. So I think that's maybe where we're getting stuck is at some point, people have to know to go to open space and give you payment information and figure out how to use it. So just talk through your strategy on that. So when the way we're going to get consumers to interact with this is through the cooperative. And what we're doing is we're partnering with applications that already exist out there, and they're going to co-install the open space application along with theirs. We're in talks, and we haven't closed it all up yet, but it looks like we'll be somewhere between 50 to 100 million people when we actually close those out. So it'll be a large app store with massive distribution. Okay. <laughs> I guess I've stumped everybody. Well, I'll, I'll throw a question out there. Maybe I'm still trying to understand it, but sure. is there a review process that needs to happen? So, you know, I guess a two-part question. One, is there a review process? Because a lot of the complaints that we've heard from iPhone developers is that their app never really makes it on the iPhone App Store. Yeah. Um, and then the corollary question to that is um, both the App Store as well as the Android space, it's getting incredibly crowded, so it's hard to find apps. So is that is that something that is going to have to, that you're going to have to think about? Yeah, so okay. as it relates to reviewing, we do that internally. We're, we're building up our staff in the way of reviewing the individual apps as they get submitted by the developers. And then discovery, and I think what you're asking is, are we doing more discovery other than just HTML5? Can you purchase Android apps or other types? Yes, you can. Um, the demo you saw, and we moved through it really quickly, shows browser extensions or browser add-ons as well as HTML5. 
Um, what I didn't mention also is when you purchase something, we'll also sync it to all of your different devices. So if I have an Android device, there's an open space application that's available for that. I purchased the New York Times app in one location, it actually shows up over here for me as well. So we've kind of taken care of all the management around actually purchasing, and we're device independent. Yeah, I, I think the big problem here is I, I think we've all decided as an industry that Flash is going to win, right? <laughs> now, seriously, um, you know, I can go to Chrome today. They've got an app store. It works for me. Um, WebOS is the other, I think, big HTML5, CSS, JavaScript play. They're going to have an app store. So I think you're in, in third place at this point. Uh, at some point, Apple does the same. Uh, I mean, effectively, the app store that they have on Mac OS X is yeah. an HTML5 app store. So you're in fourth place. Um, I'm just worried that open space really translates to empty space. Um, but ooh, ouch! I think we know who the sound is. If they get the leftmost spot uh, on my my Apple taskbar, they move the Apple Store one to the right. They might win. That's where I'm looking. So, so the answer to that is, if you're locked into a single platform, it works really well. The iPhone does a great job if you've got an iPhone and a Mac. But if you want to use a PC and, a, and an iPhone, it starts to cause problems. And a lot of people have PCs at the work, they have Android devices or iPhone devices, they have Macs at home. You want a platform or a purchasing platform that crosses all of those. And Apple doesn't have a reason to really make that happen. Google doesn't have a reason to really make that happen. Well, so you need I, an independent play Chrome to do that. On, I can get Chrome on all those platforms, so I, I, just, I'm, I don't know what the need that's being serviced here is. I think the unique piece is the open piece. Right. That yeah. there's no company except for you guys that is controlling everything. Let's take a question from the grand jury. Marshall Kirkpatrick from Read Right Web. So am I understanding correctly that this is, yeah, that this is a competitor to the Chrome Web App Store, but it seems to me that the value proposition is around the, the contextual recommendations and the behavioral recommendations. And then you're saying that it, you, the apps that you purchase then, instead of living in a new tab, as they do on Chrome, live in this sidebar uh, pull drawer, and then they can go you can take them with you across multiple platforms, web, mobile, and, and others. Yes, it's exactly what it does. Okay. Uh, so, okay. One Dave, question. Yeah. So, um, one of the reasons I think that people like the App Store is because it's a store, and you can browse it and look for things. So do you guys have a storefront of some kind, or is it all this distributed widget that sits on top of um, we do have a website, we'll be rolling it out, but we're launching with the widget to widget. start. Okay, cool. Awesome, let's uh, thank OpenSpace. Okay, uh, 